At Taupo Airport, training captain Brett Emony takes us on a walk around prior to water operations. And of course, this is a flying boat, so we're not only inspecting it as, as an aircraft that's going to be flying, but also going onto the water. So there's a number of things we need to check there as well, because once we've landed on the water, it's essentially a boat, a big speed boat, in fact, weighing you know, nearly 12 tonnes. And uh, touching down on the water, we're landing at about 76 knots, which is you know, sort of 85 miles an hour. And uh, that aeroplane has to be trimmed nicely like a speed boat traveling 80 miles an hour. Um, so landing 12 ton speed boat onto a lake is really something quite, and, uh, and, and run along on that and then just quietly bring it back down uh, as it decelerates. Back to the blister, which is a unique feature of the Catalina which uh, gives you tremendous visibility and uh, especially if you're, if you're a passenger you can sit right out into the bubble and it's like being on the outside of the aircraft actually looking back onto it. So you can see where you're going, where you've been and it's, it's definitely the best place to be sitting if you're landing on the water because you get a fantastic view of touching down and running out and when we take off you get a lot of spray and water goes right over the top of that up over the tail so it's a pretty dramatic, dramatic sort of place to be. Hull, this is this hull is 60 years old. Uh, it's got lots of patches on it, like this sort of thing. If you ever get a bit of corrosion, we just chop it out and, and uh, repair it. But essentially, the aircraft's actually in very, very good condition. Once again, you see you have more drain plugs everywhere. You just check those as you come around. Uh, work our way down to the tailplane. Okay, with uh, the feature at the back here, we have the, we have the tailplane and the rudder. The rudder is quite a large rudder, but in proportion to the rest of the aircraft, it's, it's required to be that big to balance the aileron drag that we talked about before out on the wingtips from those big ailerons. There's 50 square feet of aileron and probably about a similar amount of rudder, so they're, they're balanced up. And of course the wing is 104 feet long, so it's a tremendously big uh, wing on the seat. The same engines in the DC-3, the, the Pratt & Whitney 1830 twin row WASP engine, which develops 1200 horsepower as a supercharged engine. Uh, the propellers they originally came out with had a sort of what they call pick propellers which were, were quite slim, they came down to a place point. you can walk here, it's fabric either side so there's a solid piece in the centre. We can come on down, they've got a couple of handles there, if it's a bit slippery you can hang on to. And once down here we can then inspect the top of the fuselage and have a look at the blisters which is this unique feature of the Catalina, making sure they're all secure. On this side, this whole blister opens up, it's got a hinge line right along here. And he had control of all the mixture controls and fuel cocks for the, for the uh, fuel tanks, uh, fuel contents gauges, and a number of the switches we have here, like for fuel booster pumps, etc., on the that we now have fixed to the yoke. So that's to make it easier to operate and for so we can operate as a two-pilot operation instead of, uh, instead of having three. Uh, that's all been shifted up into the cockpit, which makes it a bit of a clutter, and we've got controls all over the place. So the uh, Running through the basic controls, the, the throttles are mounted on the roof, which is the first thing you notice about Catalina, which is quite different. And they run backwards and forwards through here. You've got both engines, right on port and starboard. And the mixture controls also travel through from here as well. And four of them are the, the uh, controls for the feathering, feathering buttons, which we can push and feather the engines if we need to, to get rid of the drag of the engine, should there be some engine-related problem. But to start the Catalina, which we were talking about earlier, was uh, is quite interesting in that you first you've got to identify the switches. They all look the same. And if we're going to start number one engine out, out here on the port, you've got the booster pump, which you turn the booster pumps on, and that's giving you fuel pressure to the carburetors. And then you have the primer and starter. And you have to identify those with your fingers of which one's actually the, the starter and which one's the primer, so that you can hold the starter on and flick the primer. Back through, and essentially, the aeroplane's uh, now ready to fly. We'll go ahead with the pre, pre okay, start check. Seat harness and cushions. Mm -hmm. Seats adjusted, cushions are good. And rudder pedals. Rudder pedals are all set. Flight plan not required, weight flight and balance. Plan. Flight plan's going to be just on the radio, so it'll be alright. Weight and balance, there's one being completed down there, so I'll sign it off. Undercarriage locks are out and stowed. Uh, uh, undercarriage locks are out and stowed. Hey, um, have your throttles at 25 inches? 25.
So that's, you're basically flying by feel, noise, the response, and then on the water, if it's imperative to touch down, keeping it absolutely straight, it's like putting a knife into the water. So if you're not in balance, it'll touch down and try and duck off one way or the other. So it's, uh, it's critical to keep, keep it in balance straight, wings level, attitude correct, and uh, as most float plane and, and uh, seaplane pilots will know, the whole thing about landing on the water is attitude. Um, not necessarily the total attitude of the pilot, but definitely the attitude of the aircraft and it's a big speedboat, keeping it in trim is the key. But a, a tremendous thing to do, and here's, this is where the Catalina's really at home, is, is putting it back down on the water. 